Item number, SCP-999. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-999 is allowed to freely roam the facility should it desire to, but otherwise must stay in its pen, either between 8 to 9 p.m. for sleeping or during emergency lockdowns for its own safety. Subject is not allowed out of its pen at night or off facility grounds at any time. Pen is to be kept clean and food replaced twice daily. All personnel are allowed inside SCP-999's holding area, but only if they are not assigned to other tasks at the time, or if they are on break. Subject is to be played with when bored, and spoken to in a calm, non-threatening tone. Description: SCP-999 appears to be a large, amorphous, gelatinous mass of translucent orange slime, weighing about 54 kilograms, or 120 pounds, with a consistency similar to that of peanut butter. Subject's size and shape is easily malleable and can change shape at will. Though, when at rest, SCP-999 becomes a rounded oblate dome roughly 2 meters wide and 1 meter in height. The surface of SCP-999 consists of a thin, transparent membrane similar to that of an animal cell roughly 0.5 cm thick and is highly elastic, allowing SCP-999 to flatten portions of its body up to 2 cm thin. This surface is also hydrophobic, although SCP-999 can willfully absorb liquids. See addendum SCP-999-A. The rest of SCP-999's body is filled with a viscous orange substance of unknown chemical makeup, though it is capable of digesting organic materials with ease. Subject's temperament is best described as playful and dog-like. When approached, SCP-999 will often react with overwhelming elation, slithering over to the nearest person and leaping upon them, hugging them with a pair of pseudopods, while nuzzling the person's face with a third pseudopod, all the while emitting high-pitched gurgling and cooing noises. The surface of SCP-999 emits a pleasing odor that differs with whomever it is interacting with. Recorded scents include chocolate, fresh laundry, bacon, roses, and play-doh. Simply touching SCP-999 surface causes an immediate mild euphoria, which intensifies the longer one is exposed to SCP-999, and lasts long after separation from the creature. Subject's favorite activity is tickle wrestling, often by completely enveloping a person from the neck down and tickling them until asked to stop, though it does not always immediately comply with this request. Though injuries may occur, SCP-999 has never been found to purposefully attempt to harm others and will immediately back away and contract its body into a quivering mound while gurgling in a manner similar to a whimpering dog seemingly apologizing for hurting one on accident. While the creature will interact with anyone, it seems to have a special interest in those who are unhappy or hurt in any way. Persons suffering from crippling depression or PTSD, for example, have reported having a far more positive outlook on life after multiple interactions with SCP-999. The possibility of manufacturing antidepressants from SCP-999 slime is currently being discussed. In addition to its playful behavior, SCP-999 seems to love all animals, especially humans, refusing to eat any meat and even risking its own life to save others. On one occasion, leaping in front of a person to take a bullet fired at them, subject's intellect is still up for debate, though its behavior is infantile. It seems to understand human speech and modern technology, including guns. SCP-999's diet consists entirely of candy and sweets, with M&Ms and Neko wafers being its favorites. Its eating methods are similar to those of an amoeba. Addendum SCP-999-A Reminder to all staff, SCP-999 is not to consume caffeinated soft drinks of any kind. Last week someone gave SCP-999 a can of cola along with its usual breakfast. Not only was it literally bouncing off the walls for half an hour, the carbonation made SCP-999 visibly queasy afterwards and it refused to move or eat for the rest of the day. SCP-999 has thankfully recovered since, but the staff member in question has been reprimanded. Signed, Doctor. Addendum SCP-999-B the following is a report from an experiment in which SCP-682 is exposed to SCP-999 in the hopes that it will curb the creature's omnicidal rage. SCP-999 is released into SCP-682's containment area. SCP-999 immediately slithers towards SCP-682.
SCP-999 moves in front of SCP-682, jumping up and down in a dog-like manner while calling out in a high-pitched squealing noise. SCP-682 immediately steps on SCP-999, completely flattening SCP-999. Observers were about to abort the experiment when SCP-682 started talking again. SCP-999 can be seen crawling up from between SCP-682's toes, up along its side and around its neck, where it clings on and begins gently nuzzling with its pseudopod. A white grin slowly spreads across SCP-682's face. SCP-682 repeats the word happy for several minutes, laughing occasionally before escalating into non-stop laughter. As laughter continues, SCP-682 rolls on its back, slamming its tail upon the floor with dangerous force. SCP-682 and SCP-999 continue the tickle fight until SCP-682 finally wears down and appears to fall asleep with what would appear to be a smile on its face. After 15 minutes with no activity, two D-class personnel enter the room to retrieve SCP-999. When SCP-999 is removed, SCP-682 immediately wakes up and unleashes an unidentifiable wave of energy from its body, all the while laughing maniacally. All persons within the wave's range collapse into crippling fits of laughter, allowing SCP-682 to escape and slaughter all in its path. Meanwhile, SCP-999 quickly rescues as many persons as it can, taking them into a safe place to recover from SCP-682's laughter wave, while agents suppress and recontain SCP-682. Despite the tragedy that SCP-682 had brought upon the facility, SCP-999 has not shown any fear towards the creature, and in fact has made gestures suggesting it wants to play with SCP-682 again. SCP-682, however, has stated that feculent little can and die. Memo from Dr. While the test was unsuccessful and kinda ended in tragedy, that had to be the funniest thing I've ever seen. I never thought I would see the day when I would regard SCP-682 as cute. Please, send me a copy of the security tapes ASAP. Warning. The following file is level 5999 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden.
Dr. Collingwood, and congratulations on your new appointment as SCP-999's head researcher, one of the cashiest and most inviolable assignments in the entire Foundation. SCP-999 is one of the few anomalies in our custody who will not only never attempt to harm you, but will actively try to save your life if you are ever in any danger. Though your initial reaction when receiving this assignment was no doubt elation, you may have thought it was odd that such a seemingly low-risk position was assigned by the O5 Council directly. If you had already heard rumors of this prior to your assignment, you probably thought it was mere nepotism. The O5s protecting their friends and loved ones by giving them the safest job possible. Unless you are so narcissistic to think that someone on the O5 Council must be your secret admirer, you have likely realized that that is not the case. To understand why this is our concern, you need to know about 999's origins. You may have noticed that its file makes no mention of where it was discovered. This is a deliberate omission. If you are not familiar with the mythology of the Scarlet King, I suggest you read up on him. There is plenty of unclassified information on him in the Foundation database. All that's relevant for now is that he is, to the best of our knowledge, the most powerful, malevolent entity in the multiverse. A good number of our SCPs are either abominations born by the rape of his own daughters, or are the creations of mortals he empowered either directly or indirectly. You have been with us since you were a research assistant, Dr. Collingwood. In that time I assume you have heard many rumors about some of the horrific things we do here at the Foundation that you have never personally witnessed. Perhaps rumors about an innocent young girl who was the victim of a satanic ritual and what we were forced to do to prevent an XK class end of the world scenario? Maybe you have even heard someone whisper the words 110 Montauk. I regret to inform you that these rumors are true. Or at least, they were. A thaumaturgical cult calling itself the Children of the Scarlet King enacted a ritual wherein seven young girls became effigies for each of the Scarlet King's seven brides, allowing them to bear his horrid offspring. How they obtained the knowledge to perform this ritual is unclear, since all we ever recovered were handwritten notebooks. Superficial resemblances to the psychic practices, thaumaturgy, human sacrifice, body mutilation, and forming a pact with a cosmic entity has led to some speculate that the children of the Scarlet Kingdom may have some ties to modern Sarkic cults. It is an interesting idea, but no concrete evidence has ever been found to link the two. Investigation into the matter is ongoing. As for the ritual itself, each birth caused more destruction than the last. The writings of the cult priest predicted nothing less than the apocalypse if the seventh bride gave birth which could only be prevented if Procedure 110 Monto was performed without fail each and every day. To our seemingly great fortune, the notebook contained detailed instructions on how 110 Monto was to be carried out. Needless to say, we found this suspiciously convenient. Why would they devise a countermeasure to prevent the very apocalypse they were trying to invoke? We needed more information regarding these entities. Fortunately, our archaeologists have unearthed numerous tablets, scrolls, and artifacts of the ancient Daives. They were a sadistic and warmongering people who were granted unholy power and knowledge by the Scarlet King as a reward for the death and suffering they caused. One of the Daivite tablets in our possession, found covered in dust and blood, was a theogony for the Scarlet King and his brides. It was quite informative. The information that we found most relevant to our situation was that the seventh bride was not like her sisters. She was never completely broken by her king's subjugation. Instead of monsters, she gave birth to great heroes in the hope that they would destroy her sister's children and overthrow their father. Thus far, all have failed. But by a vote of seven in favor, six against, admittedly, more out of concern for Procedure 110 Montauk's lack of viability as a long-term containment strategy than out of empathy for the girl. The O5 Council decided to believe that the Seventh Bride still remained unbroken and that her child would be an asset to us. 
at the risk of causing an XK class end of the world scenario, SCP 231 7 was relieved from procedure 110 Montauk following the deaths of SCP 231 1 through 6 and was allowed to give birth. SCP 999 was the result. Go ahead and listen to it again. Be sure you understand it in all its preposterous ridiculousness. The Tickle Monster is the child of the Scarlet King. We've been running a counterintelligence campaign ever since. Which is why everyone and their mother think we've still got a prepubescent girl strapped into a rape rack in a bunker somewhere. Let them think that. Far better for everyone that the children of the Scarlet King believe that they are playing us for fools than for them to know that there is a threat to their king. The girl herself is fine, by the way. She was cured of the trauma from her ordeal by SCP-999, at which point it was decided she could be returned to her family, as long as they were all given Class F amnestics, implanted with new identities, and relocated to a town at least 1,000 kilometers away from the children of the Scarlet's King nearest known activity. On the insistence of the Ethics Committee, the family was also given a seven-figure payout as compensation for repeated misdeeds against her daughter, as were the families of the other SCP-231s. I suppose it was technically malpractice on our part. In case we have any molds for the children of the Scarlet King in the Foundation, as far as anyone else knows, SCP-231-7's family were killed in front of her as part of 110 Maltalk. I'm sure you're skeptical. Are we insane? How could our sweet little tickle monster ever hope to dethrone a Lovecraftian horror of unparalleled might? Well, SCP-999 is less than a decade old. It is still just a child and nowhere near its full strength. Even so, the power is incredible. Even brief interaction with SCP-999 can permanently cure severe depression and PTSD. And more recent experiments have resulted in the complete reformation of a D-class personnel who were previously unrepentant sociopaths. This effect is not chemical, but psychic. And one day, it might grow powerful enough that not even the Scarlet King himself will be immune. The experiment with SCP-682 was most remarkable. Based on multiple Daivite texts, including descriptions from SCP-140 itself, we are reasonably certain that 682 is the offspring of the fourth Scarlet Bride. If this is true, then SCP-999 is already strong enough to temporarily quell the malevolence of its own eldritch siblings. One day, 999 could very well be strong enough to permanently reform its family members, just as it reforms human beings. It will not overthrow the Scarlet King by force, but with light and love and laughter that can brighten the blackest of hearts. SCP-999 is not, in reality, a safe class SCP. It is Thaumiel, the step best and really the only weapon we have against some of the most powerful hostile entities known to exist. By all means, Doctor, enjoy the relative safety of your new position. But do keep in mind that SCP-999 is not a mere pet that we fancy. It is one of our most valuable assets and must be safeguarded at all costs. Its safety and well-being are paramount, and you are not at liberty to share this information to anyone without level 5999 security clearance. As per protocol, unauthorized disclosure of level 5 classified information will result in your termination. This message will automatically delete as soon as you leave the terminal, so feel free to listen to it as many times as necessary to remember all of the pertinent information. Take good care of our little tickle monster. The fate of the multiverse may well depend on it. Signed. Your secret admirer, if anyone asks, 05. <sighs>
Thank you.